Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of Career Advice. And I may also point post this on the sales questions podcast but it applies to that community as well i have a listener who uh is in car sales today and wants to move into uh b2b sales so here's some feedback that i have and i wanted to share with you i think number one is you have to rebrand yourself online uh because you're probably not going to get much success through headhunters, through recruiters. Uh, you'll have to do probably this more on your own. I don't recommend filling out applications as the sole way to get into companies. Uh, you may have to do it as part of the process, but as the sole way of getting into companies, you're just another application. People don't understand the difference between you and everybody else. So it's harder to differentiate you and distinguish yourself. So what I would do is really um, pimp up your LinkedIn profile. And I mean in the professional way, not in the pejorative way. Uh, make sure you look the photo looks like you are a business to business salesperson, big, warm smile, um, professional background, uh, not a casual photo, but not, it doesn't have to be a professional. I mean, it can be a selfie, but, uh, you probably want to go a little bit more professional in this case, just because you are rebranding yourself. And I would rename the role as something that isn't, you know, car salesman or car sales manager, be sales manager, and start networking uh, through LinkedIn uh, with companies that you want to target. Now, I understand you're willing to take a step back and you will probably have to take a, a little tiny step back, maybe for six months to a year, but great sales VPs are always looking for sales talent. And what I would do is as much research on the companies and the space as you can get to learn the vocabulary, what people care about, how they evaluate people, how they interview people. Uh, there's a million YouTube videos on this. So I would go through that, uh, look for, you know, this type of company interview process, this uh, best interview questions, just put them into Google, find out what the questions are and videotape yourself answering those questions. Like, why do you want to get into B2B? Uh, how do you think you'll do the first month? What's your 90 day plan? Uh, what's your approach to this and that? And what are your strengths? And just go through that and really uh, run the gauntlet, write down your answers, videotape your answers, get used to giving those answers because they're coming from the approach of you're not a fit, uh, you know, and we want to find a better fit. What you have to do is take the approach of scoring going slow, connecting up with them on LinkedIn, starting conversations with them, and trying to convert that into an interview. And really bring out your strengths of what you're good at and understand the complex sale, that a multi-stage sale, because the, the car sales business, I know I bought cars. I've never sold, a, oh, I've sold cars you know, to people in parking lots uh, through uh, the internet, but I've never you know, physically sold a car on a lot as a job. But it, it's typically a transaction. You know, is this the car they want? Uh, do they have the money to afford it? Can they take action now? Because everybody knows if they walk off the lot, 99% of the time, they're not coming back. Now, in a business-to-business -business sale, it's it's much more like um, a courtship than it is a first date. Uh, a business-to-consumer thing is kind of like uh, that round-robin you know, dating thing that you see on the TV. I don't know if you've ever been to it, but you get like five or ten minutes with each person, get to see if there's any chemistry, and then you move on. A business-to-business -business complex sale is much more like, you know, a courting process coming to a fruition in, you know, three to nine months. Um, and th that is a different strategy you take. You take a slower approach. You understand what the other person is looking for. You give evidence that you have what that other person is looking for. And you progress through this natural process. If you try and force it or push it in the complex sale, it actually has a negative effect. In the 
in the one-to-one transactional sale, that actually can have a positive effect. Sometimes people need a little nudge to get over that little hump. I know I've done it in, in buying a car. I, I've walked off the lot several times and I wanted to buy the car. And, and literally, you know, <laughs> because we're, we're trained to do that. You go home and they call you and they'll give you the price and they're mad at you because it's all phoniness. But you come back and you get the car. And, um, and plus, it, it's a huge investment uh, from the consumer personal standpoint. So they're apprehensive about it. So they're not uh, – they need a little nudge. It's a, the second largest purchase they'll probably make in their life. Uh, so I would rebrand myself, learn as much as you can about the particular business that you want to get into, uh, connect up with people, and go directly to the sales manager. Do not go through online applications. Uh, position it as an informational interview. Say, you know, hey, I'm trying to break into this space. I'd love some coaching from you. Um, you know, would it would it be a pain if I got five minutes on the phone with you just to ask? And don't ask for an interview. Just get pull out the information, let them go. And believe me, every sales manager in the world wants to hire A players. So find out what they consider an A player. My interview move was always to ask, tell me your ideal candidate. And I'd be pointing at myself and memorizing the top three things that they said. Because in the top three things that they say, they're going to say something that really is the top thing. You know, some people it's, you know, hard work. Some people it's curiosity. Some people it's focus. Some people it's just uh, grit and determination. Whatever it is, play it back to them with examples of how you are that person. Real life examples. And, and you, I'm sure you have them. And the transition isn't that hard. It's not super simple either. I would say, you know, with one to three months, you'd be able to do it. Now, I've got that course that, to help people break into B2B called Sales Development Rep. Uh, grad school, master's degree. And the idea there is to show you the ropes. So I walk through it with office hours, with help, with hand-holding, all the way through the whole thing to get the job. And you're welcome to take that course. And it guides you through that whole first year. So after 12 months, you're a rock star. You know the tools, you know how to manage your manager, you know how the qualification, everything, and anything that you have a question about, you get an answer for it. So would I recommend that course? Definitely if you want help. If you want to hunt and peck, you can do that in this stage. Getting the job is not the hard part. <laughs> you know, I talk to a lot of people. It's like, well, I got the job. I guess I'm all set. No, no, no. You've got to perform on the job. And the, the space for the B players it will always exist. I, I will not argue that it won't exist. But what won't exist is the good pay. You'll have a reasonable base. And because what they're doing today is upping the on-target income, which means they're reducing the commission rate. Uh, and so they're making it artificially look like you can make a lot of money. But they're doing that to reduce the commission rate. So the cost of the person is less because nowadays they've segmented the sales process, which means they have to do more because they're paying basically 50% more in commission because they have a base salary for the sales development, business development rep, and the account exec. So what, how they've fixed that and hosed over the sales reps is by increasing the on-target income. It's just math. It's like if you hire a virtual assistant, you've got to pay for them. Now, will they produce more than they consume? You hope so. In most cases, they do. So it makes financial sense. But in today's crazy world, they've, you know, and, and it's, it does make sense to do this. The problem is if it doesn't work, that's where the rub is. And most of the time, it doesn't work because they hire very junior people. They don't help them out. They're teaching them what worked five or 10 years ago, not what works today. So that's the gap. So that's where my course is trying to fill that gap for you. Um, that, that's all I had today. Check out everything I've got at B2B Revenue. I've got a free ebook on there where you learn how companies make buying selections. I'm, I'm just 
every book I read is about how to sell. But if you don't understand how companies make decisions, it doesn't matter how you sell. People are missing the boat. So read the book. It's a, it's a 20 page ebook. Uh, used to have it on Amazon. So it's a real book, it's not a fluff book. And if you really study it, don't just read it. So check that out and make sure you're checking out the other podcasts if you're into sales. Appreciate the questions. Keep them coming. Thanks for listening.